Well, thank you everyone for being a part of our February monthly match my meeting. If you can believe it's going to be March in a couple of days. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know where the time goes anymore. Oh my gosh. But anyway, I'm excited to have John on here to chat about a little bit about social media and some other things, but he's a great resource and a great person to know in the channel, especially in the dynamic space, because he does a lot. So I'm glad that you're here, John, to chat with the group. So thank you for thank you for being here. And if you didn't know, he's one of the masterminds behind Directions NA so that's coming up in April. So he's been very busy doing that. <laughs> we have, so we have. All right, John, I'll let you uh, take it away. All right, so let me share my screen. And we'll do a little intro. But thanks for inviting me here. You're um, welcome. <clears throat> Yeah, Amy, and thanks um, to everyone else for joining us today, and thanks for anyone who's going to listen to this uh, uh, later on or another time when uh, they have a little bit more time to talk about. So what we're going to try to talk about today is why you should be using LinkedIn newsletters and what are LinkedIn carousels. We're going to talk about those two topics. Most of the topic is going to be real around newsletters, but that's what we're going to talk about. So for anyone who doesn't know myself, uh, been in the Microsoft channel for over ooh, 25 plus years now, um, been in various different roles, consulting, sales, marketing. I um, actually have a marketing agency or a couple agencies now that actually help uh, the partners and the ISVs out there. We also work in the other industries as well. Microsoft is not the only place, but that's where we're basically being heavily focused. Um, one of my specialities, one of my favorite topics is always talking about analytics, social media, and SEO. Those are really the hot topics I always like to talk about. And of course, just overall marketing uh, and just trying to help the community. Um, as Amy was saying, um, I actually sit on the board of directors for uh, Directions North America. Um, you can either beat me up or not beat me up. I actually own all the content uh, for the event. So we've been working very hard to get through that over the last few months. Um, it's not helpful. When, well, it's good, but it's not helpful when you have nearly 300 sessions. You have to whittle down to about 65 plus um, just to make sure I clarify that. It's not the only sessions we have. We have over, three, uh, over 130 sessions, but quite a lot of those sessions also come from Microsoft as well. So at the end of the day, um, it's a big task trying to go through. So I was just talking to Amy as we were coming on the call. I spent a number of hours last week actually individually emailing every single speaker that got selected. So anyway, enough of that. Let's get into more of the fun stuff. So what are we going to talk about? What are we going to learn today? Like I said, we're going to learn how to drive more engagement with LinkedIn newsletters and then what a car uh, LinkedIn says. And feel free. Um, to hop in and ask any questions as we go along. I don't mind being interrupted as we go along. More than happy to do that. Do you mind if I ask a quick question, John, before you yeah. get started? Who yeah. uses LinkedIn newsletters and or LinkedIn carousels today? I, I do. <laughs> Is any, who else on the call does? Anybody? Didn't know they existed, unfortunately. Okay. Well, that's a good thing. That's why you're, you're here, Zubin. Yeah. <laughs> Tristan or Natalie, do you guys utilize either of those? Uh, no. Okay. I know what they are, but I don't utilize them. Okay. So for anyone who doesn't know, simply put, it's a LinkedIn newsletter that's periodically posted um, on the LinkedIn platform that allows you to actually share relevant news. Um, what I like about it is that when the content comes out, it's using the LinkedIn platform. So let's just go back and go a little deeper into that conversation. And um, we all are big fans, hopefully, of email marketing. But there's always pros and cons, right? At the end of the day, email is still, and I'm not saying you go away from email. Um, for me, one of the always the challenges is how do I make sure I don't get someone into my spam box or unsubscribe? How do I make sure of that happening? 
was a challenge, right? So at the end of the day, you're going to constantly be adding uh, new people. Well, with the LinkedIn concept, there's two ways that you can use newsletters. You can do it under a personal profile and you can do it under a company profile. Um, when you do it under a personal, what happens is, and we'll probably, um, I have a few more slides to talk about this, but at the end of the day is what happens is when you create a newsletter concept in LinkedIn, it will actually automatically notify every single person that you're connected to. It does it on behalf of you. You don't have to tell the system, it does it. If it's a company version, so using your company page to manage it, it then takes anyone that's in the company page and who is following you. Um, I actually prefer the first option, um, especially when I look at trying to find influencers within the organization. Um, that might lead to the fact that we may have to have multiple newsletters. So let's hypothetically say that we're talking to, let's just use industries as an example. Let's say um, I've, we're talking, let's say food and beverage is one of our industries and manufacturing is another industry. Well, I may find two people inside the organization that will talk to those different topics. I won't mix the two, but I'll talk differently. And some organizations which are smaller, you may not be able to do that. So you want to build out a newsletter. So even though it's got the concept of a newsletter, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are pumping out a newsletter. We're going to talk a little bit more about the content you can push out through there. So at the end of the day, um, hassling me. Um, so at the end of the day is that sort of where it's going. One of the things is it's not 100% the same as a blog. Um, you can use it like a blog, which quite a few people can do. So let's just move forward then. So let's just talk about um, some of the reasons why you would want to look at, at using them. It helps you re, um, reach a wider audience, right? Because your newsletter reach is not limited uh, to ad targeting or tailored audience methods. Um, so the end of the day is the other piece I should have probably brought into that is when LinkedIn or when you add some content, LinkedIn will automatically update all the subscribers. Again, you're not controlling that. LinkedIn is doing it on behalf of you. And one of the things that I like about that is LinkedIn has already got probably your audience's authority to receive emails. So therefore, unless they unsubscribe, they have to, well, if they want to unsubscribe, they have to go to your newsletter. Otherwise, if they go and put that LinkedIn message in spam, they're never going to um, get any more messages from LinkedIn, right? So that means they're not going to get any password updates or any other important news. So they have to make an effort to do it. So it's a little bit more effort, but I think there's a lot more trust there. Um, the increase of user engagement, uh, because you give people an opportunity to discuss your content. This also works with blogs, of course, but it, it lets people get in there and start interacting. And as always, what we always like is, is trying to get people to engage with our content on LinkedIn. And that's a real big um, key people, uh, key thing. Um, one of the other things I would say, it establishes your authority. Right, so as you're trying to be a thought leader in your space, it really will help your brand. It also helps because it's gonna help from the LinkedIn algorithm, the more you do this. And then I think one of the other ones I would say, it does in the long run help boost lead generation. Because again, you're putting content in front of people that may or may not um, come and follow your newsletter. Uh, let's say an email campaign that you do. Um, a good example of this is I had a client that uh, have a client that's in the food and beverage space. They had built up a small quantity of people on LinkedIn. Some people say this is probably big, but they had actually uh, had about four and a half thousand followers that they were connected to on LinkedIn. And about 75% of those people were in the food and beverage space. Now, the downside is what they kept asking me to do was to extend, uh, basically export all those contacts and bring it into an email platform. 
Didn't want to do that because one, I don't like to bring people into a system that haven't been qualified or have agreed to get emails. Secondly, the bigger piece of it, I would have said probably 60 to 80% of those connections probably only had personal email addresses. So there is no way I'm going to send to a personal email address without the um, confirmation. So how did we go approach it? So we took the newsletter option to actually go out and push content in front of those people. Within a matter of like less than 24 hours, we'd already had a hundred and plus followers. Uh, roll on three months later, we have got out of that 4,000, we've probably got 75% already. So we have over 3,000 followers on that account, which I, I would say is not probably the norm, but that is a pretty big uh, return on the people that we have. So um, when it comes to some of the best practices, and I'll show you some what uh, these look like in a second, is one, you want to choose an appropriate newsletter name. Right. I know that Amy probably thought some uh, thought about hers and what hers should be. You want to write an impactful headline. What is it going to be? And I'm going to look at Andy's um, newsletter properly in a second, the one I'm showing here. Uh, provide commentary for engagement. So how do we do that? Well, here's my secret sauce. Um, is basically what I like to do is write blogs on the company website, but then take that blog find a break point if it's three quarters way down through two thirds, whatever it is where I can find a break point where I can still engage the audience. And I build this content for LinkedIn newsletters, but then I don't give away the, all the information. I put in a link to go back to the main website where they can read the rest of the blog. So that's how we use it a lot for a lot of our clients. Um, so basically, on top of that, you could use it for other things. You could use it truly for a newsletter as well. Um, and Amy, you know, you could talk to about how you're using it, but there's a lot of different methods, but I like the blogging as a great way to get that content in front of people and also hopefully drive more engagement. The other one I would say, like anything, like emailing, like blogging, you wanna publish on a regular basis. So when you tell people at the beginning, you're either going to publish once a month, once every three months, twice a month, once a week. You need to tell that and you need to stick to it. It's like blogging. People get used to frequencies. So with that, let me just go and grab and feel free to ask any questions while I'm just grabbing um, this extra. This other, a he has of a lot of subscribers. <laughs> yeah, so... This guy, Andy uh, Crostini, at the end of the day, he has 175,000 uh, subscribers. Um, he's built up over a period of time. I like reading what he's got, but let me just go into. So he's written 103 articles. So let's just pick on this one, all right? So he's got an engaging graphic, an engaging heading, he does write very long topics here, which is okay. You don't have to write them as long. So he's really trying to engage you into the conversation. And then further down, you'll find that it will take you into the blog. Now, or into the whole blog. What I also like, and he hasn't done it on this, is in some of his articles, if I can find one here that does that. Let's see if this one does that. Yeah, this one doesn't. So one of the things that he has done in the past is put at the top here is a little bit of an intro that's on multiple of these um, newsletters. And it basically says about what you're going to receive. And, um, and if you're not a follower, it encourages you to follow him. And then right at the end, let's see if this one's got it, um, he'll put together and this one doesn't have it, but at the end of the day, he'll have it somewhere else in here, is, there we go. Um, it puts another piece of content. It's like, read more, or yes, take me to the full list. So if I just click on that, it should take me to his full blog. And that will be even more detailed than what was found on LinkedIn. So at the end of the day is, as Amy was saying, 
there is a big following. I mean, I think we'd all love to get to this size, but what the other key is, is others are sharing this. So if we come in and look at down the bottom here, you can see that people are reacting to it. Um, they're writing to it. Now, one of the things that you want to do if you're doing this is that you want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on it because if people do respond, you need to respond as well, right? So if someone writes something, it's like anything you do on social media. If you see or if someone responds and engages with your message, you need to respond back to them. It's, it's not a good thing when you don't. Uh, and then people start to realize that you're just automating everything and you're not really paying attention. Um, this can't be automated. It's a very manual process, uh, but it just does drive engagement. So let me just take a breather there with, um, and just throw Amy under the bus here. Amy, yes. how have you found right using the newsletter concept for you? Uh, so I started mine, oh, I don't know, a couple, maybe a few months ago, and I do it bi-monthly. And so what I do is I try to, I usually either promote a podcast or a blog. What I like about promoting podcasts is that you can embed the Spotify link right in there and they don't have to leave the platform to listen to it, supposedly. Um, they can automatically go in and, and view it. So uh, they try to make it so that way you... They try to make it so you don't leave your platform, basically. Um, so I tried to do that. I promote all of our um, initiatives that we're doing in the ISV Society. Um, if there's news and if there's news in the channel, I'll promote that. So I kind of like take some tidbits of other information if it makes sense. But most of the time, yep. it's educational, informational in nature too. Yep, and I just put one of your examples up here. So yeah. you can get an idea if you haven't seen what Amy's doing, this is sort of good. And there is, and I've gone back and forth about the pros and cons about taking people off to the rest of the blog. Um, and at the end of the day is after researching this Andy guy and other research I've done, at the end of the day, if someone like Andy can actually have a hundred plus thousand follow, uh, subscribers, Mm -hmm. It must be working for him and it's not affecting too much from the algorithm. Yeah. That you are taking people. Now, does that mean down the road that could change? 100% yes. Like anything you do in LinkedIn, you want to keep it as much as possible inside the whole environment, right? So, you know, the more you keep it inside LinkedIn, the better. Right. So, so at the end of the day, what you're doing is a perfect example, I think, for any uh, anyone else on this call, um, if it's I, uh, like an ISV, if you're blogging out there, use it or use it to keep announcements going out there. Not And just assume that subscribers here are not necessarily they're going to be the same subscribers you may have elsewhere. Right. Um, so one of the things that I can't get to here, but... One of the things that as the owner of it, you can also see who your subscribers are, right? So you mm -hmm. can go in and see who's subscribing. So it gives you now an opportunity, right? To see, hey, am I getting some folks in here that I'm not working with? And now that means that you have a door opener at some point to start to maybe reach out through social selling to those folks. Um, the other piece is that I can't see it because of this, but at the end of the day, all of these published articles all have stats on them. So at the end of the day, you can view the stats and see how well things are going. Um, and that's a very useful thing to give you an idea is, is it getting uh, attention or not? Any questions from anyone else in the audience here? And like you mentioned, I do like the fact that when you send one out, what happens is they get an email uh, from LinkedIn. And then they also, right. get, like, if you have notifications turned on on your phone, you get a, a phone notification too. That's yeah. a, that this person just published. So I like right. that too. Yeah. I mean, I love the fact that it's uh, it gets published. Um, and I'm just reading one of the chats. Um, <clears throat> 
is that uh, Zubin, you just put the creator mode on and, and LinkedIn suggested an initial post. Yeah, exactly. So it gives you an example of what um, you will talk about um, from the creator mode. So it starts to get people up. Now, just be ready, when you start doing this, is be ready to start to do the whole piece, I would say, but it does get a lot of engagement. Um, mm -hmm. I have quite a lot, if I come back, I follow quite a lot of them out there. Oops, I went too far here. And to get them, it's under, if you wanna see who you're following, you go under my network and then you can start to see uh, what's going on. Um, here is, I mean, here's one I started following, um, not someone we work with, but this is someone that's in the dynamics industry. Um, so they're pumping out different articles on a regular basis. It tells you how long it's gonna be. All of that stuff is happening out there. So um, really encourage you to look at that um, as an option. And then the second part of the conversation as well is when you go to promote this, um, or once you go to um, publish that article, it will actually ask you to put a little bit of a wrapper around it as well to promote it on your LinkedIn. Um, but where I'm going to go next is really utilizing LinkedIn with what we call carousels or carousel imagery. Um, probably a few of you on here are probably used to hearing uh, LinkedIn ads and carousels, but there's also the concept of carousels in the organic road as well. What that really is, is where you've got um, multiple pages to an image, I would say. Uh, so basically, you're going to create something like a PDF that will have major, major, uh, multiple pages. And I recommend somewhere between three to seven pages. You don't want to go too long. And each page is sort of encouraging the user to engage more and more. And at the end, then you have a task, right? So again, if you're trying to promote, let's take an ebook, give away some of the, the teaser, right? Let's say you've got in the ebook, you've got the seven points about, um, I'm trying to think of something around, uh, about um, how to do reporting, right? At the end of the day, tease a little bit of what you're gonna give them and then bring them in. Now, when you use carousels, carousels actually tend to get a lot more engagement than what I call a flat image. Um, they, because people have to click through and read it. The other downside is that you have to go and put it manually. So a lot of us have probably over the years have tried to stop doing manual and going more to an automated system to do this. LinkedIn's trying to drive more and more people back to the manual because it shows you're a little bit more engaged um, and it helps better with the algorithm. So at the end of the day to do carousels, what you can go into is something like a Canva or a um, PowerPoint, go and create your slides, then create uh, a PDF from it. And then you upload that into um, your actual, when you're writing here, so hang on a second, go here. So when I go and do a post, right, I then can actually add pieces of content. So I'm gonna add a document, choose the file, and then that will step it through. If you want to look at someone that really does a great job of this, don't know Candice Um, At the end of the day, she actually does a lot out there. So let's go um, look at some of hers and hopefully you'll get a feel for what I'm talking about. But it's a great way to promote things. So too far. Um, for some reason, my machine's been running a little bit sluggish today. Let's uh, go and grab the post here. Let's see if we can find one or a smart one. Let's go down here and grab. I'm going to try to find if she's got one right here, but we're fine. <laughs> of course, when you want to find one. Yeah, it's always the same one. I don't think this is one. Right? Paper, what you want? Ah, oh dear. He's definitely not had one for not pumped out one for a while. Here we go. So here's a good example, right? So she's got the intro to it, 
And then you could see it says one of seven. If I click on the arrow, it walks me through. And if we go and look at any of, do you do any research on what is getting the most attention? You would think video is number one. It is actually carousels has been number one for a while on engagement. Videos is very close behind. So putting these out really do drive a lot of engagement. It gives you better um, ranking with their algorithm as well. Uh, because you're manually putting it out as well. Now, if if you look at this, she's put, not putting any link backs to anywhere on her home website. Now, what she might do here, let's see if she does it on this one. Uh, this one is just more of a conversational one. If you're trying to link it back to that ebook as, as an example, don't put the link up in here. Put it down in a comment. So on your first comment, then share the link. Right, and you can tell people in here, you're sharing the link down below, because as soon as you put that link into your message, it will uh, bring down uh, your ranking when it comes to the algorithm. By keeping it separate, it actually doesn't do as much damage. So when you put it down in the comments, it actually helps you in the long run. So any questions on these two topics we just talked about? I group. How have you found them, Amy? Because I know you said you've been. I using yeah, them. I just I just started using them not too long ago, so I like yeah, I like them. Yeah. I just did an eighteen it, it, tips webinar with Liz Hallen, and so I'm breaking them up into I'm breaking those eighteen tips up into different um, carousel posts. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. It's a great way to get some engagement. The other day is if you spend any time researching on LinkedIn and how it really, you try to work out how it functions, a lot of the research out that others have done, mm -hmm. um, things like newsletters, carousels, they're all the things which are on the top list. Video, of course, is always there. Um, but they're some of the key elements that are driving. I think the number one, I would say overall, is forget all that, is the fact that you're out there manually doing things. Um, I will say that we try to mix it for our clients. At the end of the day, it becomes very costly for us to be able to go out there and we put our hands up on that and say, look, we can't do every single thing manually because you got to do it every day. Um, and that gets expensive. So right. if, let's look at the, the top right pieces of content and actually then do those more in the manuals. Or if we come back and repeat something that we've already done, then we can schedule that. But if you've got... Let's, I'm going to go back to the ebook example. If we've got a new ebook, let's go and put that out through a carousel the first time. And that way, then um, we can use that as part of that process of creating that ebook and all that stuff. So um, I really strongly recommend if you're not doing any of these, is to start looking at it. Yeah, and I like that that like with the LinkedIn newsletter, it's not like you have to create new content. It's, you're just repurposing content that you have. So don't feel like yeah. you have to create all brand new content to do a LinkedIn yeah, newsletter because exactly. you don't. Yeah, I mean that's the whole the nice yeah. thing about it is that at the end of the day is it's not expect. I mean you don't have to go down the road now. Um, it's it's helpful maybe sometimes to create some new pieces, but you don't have to. Um, Pretty much all the ones I've researched are all replicating what they already have. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day is um, definitely look at that. So no questions, that's huh? What I have. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> a little quiet today. <laughs> they've gone. I mean, I can't imagine Zubin shy. I know he's. Uh, <laughs> I know Zubin usually asks questions, Zubin. I'm shocked you're yeah. not. Uh, it's going to be more along the lines of how many articles do I need Amy to manhandle for me before we even <laughs> hit our first post? Uh, so the, the gist what, from you was ignore that first post prompt and make sure that you've got at least a couple 
articles um, in the queue before you start turning yes. it off and using it, right? Yeah, it's okay. it's the same with, I would treat it Zubin, very similar for the first time someone's going to blog, right, on their website. Um, at the end of the day, there's nothing worse than you write a blog, you have all this great initiative to go out and write another blog before the month's end, uh, some other things start to come and affect you. And before you know it, three months have gone and you haven't put out another blog. And people forget frequency is, is the king when it, or when it comes to people seeing stuff. Uh, people get used to it. At the end of the day, if you're sending emails out on the third Thursday, right, people get used to that. Same mm -hmm. goes in the social world. So I would always say less is more. Um, if you can't put out one every week, one every two weeks. One, once a month is okay. Once every three months is fine. At least be doing something. But yeah, don't make sure you already have it. But it should fit into your um, blogging uh, schedule. So if you match the two together, at the end of the day, if you know you have a blog in March, you have a blog in April, you're already set. But if you don't already have where that's going, um, then yes, you'd have to probably, I would slow it down. Um, the other piece that you could look at, and we've done this for a few as well, is if you've already written a, um, a handful of blogs, you could always start there. You could start to push those out over the, maybe the first month or so and gradually build some attention while you're writing your fresh new ones to then fill in once you've gone through that. So you're not limited just to um, new stuff. So you can always go back in time. Gotcha. Quick question. Uh, you said you uh, suggested doing the newsletters on your personal account instead of the business account. Uh, yeah. So I've got 1,500 plus followers that have accumulated over the years. Some are GP and, and ERP related mm -hmm. and some are legacy interactive TV and a couple careers ago. Um, when they convert to followers, if they get frustrated in their streams, things that aren't relevant to them, uh, if they unfollow you, are you losing the contact? Are they breaking the contact connection or just not following you as a creator? So there's, there's two things on that I would break it down, Zubin. One, they have an opportunity. It's up to them to subscribe to your newsletter. If they don't subscribe, they're not going to receive it. If they subscribe and then they realize it's not something they want to listen to, they can come back and unsubscribe. At the end of the day is you could have, then it could go down as, okay, maybe I don't want to listen to the conversation anymore. I don't have an issue unless, at the end of the day, if someone unfollows me, I don't have an issue because at the end of the day is, I'm trying to use this network as my way to drive business, all right? At the end of the day, it's all about driving business. Now, there's always gonna be people that maybe um, you stay friends and stuff like that. I would say the majority of those people are not gonna go away. They're just not gonna to listen to the conversations. But yes, you're always gonna um, have a few drop-offs possibly through this, uh, but I don't think that's a bad thing. At the end of the day, all, to me, a lot of social is about is having the right people that are going to engage. So let's just go out of that 1,500, right? If you have 800 people that are never going to buy from you or never engage with your pieces, then one, don't do what I've just recommended because you're not going to have enough people. And two, you want to start building up the audience that will engage with you and will possibly buy your solution down the road. Or let's go back to the engaging. Let's say they're already an existing customer. They start to go and engage with that piece of content from a lot. Um, let's go deeper than a like. Let's say they start commentary on it. What happens to that? Like all other pieces, it gets into their feed. So what I've always used over the years is you may only have 1,500 followers, but if that John Rivers guy has got 18,000 plus and he engages with something, he's now put it into his network of that high quantity, right? So treat 
the people that you're trying to look at engaging as your influencers, not always necessary as a, protect, a prospective customer. Okay, thanks. Yeah, um, and that should be the same concept across social um, anyway. So don't ever be scared to have people drop off. Any other questions from anyone else? And if anyone has uh, anyone wants to delve into this a little deeper and ask me additional questions, I put my uh, email address. I mean, you can find me on LinkedIn as well if you have. I don't know if you have already. So just feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to discuss this a little deeper. Because um, one of the things that we've done, I'm more than happy to share this as well. One of the things that we did a lot of research and analytics over the last. I would say year to two years, we saw a huge drop off on a lot of our clients using Twitter. And at the end of the day, so what we've done is we've backed off of Twitter on a number of our clients and actually taking that budget that we needed to be able to uh, create carousels and manage their newsletter and all of those things and repurpose that budget to actually manage that. So they didn't have an increase in their expenses but now they're actually getting a lot more engagement than previously. So we're seeing an uptick there. Um, some people would argue it's like, why are you walking away? But we saw not a lot of happening on uh, Twitter. Now we got still clients running it, but um, quite a few of our clients, we just stopped posting there because it just doesn't drive anything for the audience we're trying to go after. Yeah, I can agree. I feel like Twitter is just a ball of white noise. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and it's not just a pick on Elon, but there's been a no. lot of, right, I think it was going on a lot longer before him. Um, he just um, poked his fingers in a little bit more. That probably just upset it a little bit more. Um, it may come back like anything. There's there's platforms which are trying to come back, um, but we're constantly trying to be on the front end, and we have to look at where it makes sense to spend the mm -hmm. money for our clients, right? Right. Well, thank you, John. You're welcome. You're welcome. So I appreciate you bringing me on here. Thanks yes. for everyone who joined. Thanks yeah. for everyone who's going to be listening to this later on. Yes, thank you, everyone. And before we go, I just want to say, Natalie, do you mind just giving a brief intro since you're new to the group and tell us a little bit about you and WebSAN? Um, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Not to put you on the spot at all. <laughs> Uh, I'm Natalie. I'm the marketing manager um, at WebSAN Solutions. Uh, we're a Microsoft partner that sells mainly Business Central and CRM solutions. Um, yeah, I don't know what else, <laughs> what else you want me to say. No, that's fine. No, that's good. Well, I guess, <laughs> I guess you sell like e-commerce platform or e -com, you focus on. Uh, just like the Microsoft ERP solutions, um, mainly, and then like Office 365 and Power BI here and there. Um, a lot of our marketing content is video based and video heavy. Uh, that's where we found the most success. So just learning about a new um, avenue, a new channel uh, where we can take that content and repurpose it on um, would be great for us. Great. Thank you. Yeah, that video, I mean, you, you probably got, you could probably take some of the transcripts, Natalie, and actually quite easily turn it into carousels as well. Um, I would probably look at both, right, to see what's engaging the audience the most when you push it out. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Stay tuned for next month's meeting. I, I'm already lining up our guest for that one, but I thank you so much, John, for being here. And we'll see you all, some of you at Directions, I'm sure. I'll, John, I'll see you there. <laughs> thank you all. all right. Thank you very much, John. It was very helpful. Thanks, John. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks, Catch everyone. Bye. Bye, guys. Thanks, Amy.